So there's a music streamer that everyone is talking about, and it's pretty much unanimously loved by reviewers. The streamer that I'm talking about is of course the EverSolo DMP A6, more specifically in my case, the DMP A6 Master Edition. What are the differences between the regular DMP A6 and the Master Edition? We're gonna cover that and whether or not it sounds better than your processor in today's review. I'm Barrett, this is Spec of Tech, welcome to the channel. It is true there are a ton of reviews online about this music streamer, but one thing that hasn't been covered is whether or not it's a worthy upgrade from your processor for music. We are going to answer that question today after I put it head to head with my Anthem AVM90 processor. There was a clear winner, but it wasn't always clear because it is somewhat reliant on the other equipment, and I'll explain more later in the video. Before we get into all that, I want to cover the differences between the regular version of the DMP A6 and the Master Edition. There are some cosmetic differences. The Master Edition has some gold accents and the halo light around the volume is orange instead of the regular A6's white light. There are some internal hardware differences as well, the first of which is the clocking system. The Master Edition is using a femtosecond clock system that they claim has ultra low noise and jitter. What is a femtosecond you might ask? It is a term used to describe a unit of time that is one quadrillionth of a second. Is that something that you would actually be able to hear? I personally don't know. I'll let you make up your own mind on that one. But to put it simply, the Master Edition has an upgraded clocking system over the regular A6. The other hardware difference is the Master Edition is using OPA1612 op amps, which again claim ultra low noise and low distortion. In comparison to the regular A6, it's using the OPA1642 op amps. Again, I'm not sure if this is something that the human ear can hear, but it's good to know that there are some hardware upgrades to go along with the gold aesthetics. Besides the aesthetics and the internal differences, of course there is also a price difference between the two as well. I've dropped links down in the description if you'd like to see the current pricing, but at the time of this recording, the Master Edition is $1,299 US or 1999 Canadian and the regular A6 is 899 US dollars or 1299 Canadian. Whether or not the upgrades that you're receiving in the Master Edition for the price increase is worth it is completely up to you as an individual. For me personally, I wanted the best that Ever Solo had to offer at the time, so I went with the Master Edition. Regardless of which unit you do pick, they offer a ton of value when you compare them to other streamers on the market. Ever Solo incorporated an ESS Sabre ES9038Q2M DAC chip, not to be confused with the ESS9038 Pro DAC. The Pro version is an 8-channel DAC, and the 9038Q2M is a 2-channel DAC that is designed to be used in mobile or low-power consumption applications. But needless to say, the DMP A6 will handle pretty much any format of audio that you can throw at it. Here's a picture that highlights all of the features. Feel free to pause it and have a look. But there have been so many reviews that have covered all this, I don't want to sound like a broken record and repeat it myself. The unit has Ethernet and Wi-Fi internet connectivity, along with Bluetooth aptX connectivity, and so much more. Let's just say that it has all the bells and whistles, and that includes the I.O. on the back. You have analog balanced and unbalanced inputs and outputs, a coaxial input and output, an optical input, Input and output, USB-C audio in, and two USB 3.0 Type A audio outputs. One of the things that sets the EverSolo apart from a lot of the competition is the inclusion of an HDMI audio DSD output. Besides all the plentiful ways that you can use the DMP A6 to enjoy your favorite music, it also is a beautiful looking unit. It incorporates a six inch touchscreen for those that want to interact with the unit in a more intimate way, or for those that sit up close and personal to the streamer. For those that want to sit back far away from their streamer, EverSolo has produced an intuitive and sophisticated app. You can control the device with the app itself, or you can even use your Android phone or iPhone to mirror the screen from the EverSolo to your phone and operate it exactly as if you were sitting right there using the touchscreen on the DMP A6 itself. If you're the type that likes a good old-fashioned handheld remote, EverSolo doesn't include one in the box, but they do offer the BTR-12 remote for about 12 US dollars or $20 Canadian. For the price of the EverSolo unit, I feel like it should just be included in the box, but my assumption is that they assume most users will be more than content with the touchscreen and the app for controlling the unit. For the most part, I imagine most users won't want or need the handheld remote, but it's still great that they do offer one for those who want it. It's just unfortunate that it comes at an extra cost. As I just mentioned, the remote wasn't included in the box, but let's have a quick look of what is included in the box. EverSolo did an excellent job on the packaging of their streamer, so I do want to give it a little bit of attention here. After we have a look at what's inside the box, we'll get into the sound quality and whether or not it sounds better than my AVM90 processor. So one thing that uh, EverSolo did really well on for the DMP A6 streamer is the packaging. 
you got some uh, shiny kind of icons or uh, decals on here, and then you have the chrome almost uh, ever solo logo. But opening the box, you're greeted with the user manual and some paperwork, and then some foam on the top just for protection. And then you have this little box here, which will be the power cable. Uh, power cable and a little screwdriver with a USB uh, cable, which they actually do include with their DAC as well. So they want to make sure you have a USB cable. I'm not going to use that for now. But uh, the screwdriver, I'm guessing, is for the panel on the bottom so you can open it up to place an SSD uh, hard drive. And then you have your power cable. And then you have the unit itself in this little drawstring bag here. Uh, very similar to the Z8 DAC and it's very solid like you can just feel it when you lift it up it's a very solid unit so there's the back of the unit there's the front of the unit uh, but I did want to show this packaging for you guys because it is quite nice they did take some special care in packaging these units but now that we've seen what's in the box let's move on with the review the unboxing experience was just another aspect of this unit that makes you feel like you bought a quality piece of gear but what really sets your mind at ease after buying the unit is the sound quality and the functionality I haven't had any major hiccups while using my unit there is one small bug that happens from time to time when the song gets hung up in the loading stage and just doesn't play all I have to do to fix it is to back up to the previous page and then move forward to the page that I was just on and that seems to fix the problem but it doesn't happen very often and it really isn't a big deal the DMPA6 has just been really solid to use regardless if I'm using the app the screen mirroring function or even the handheld remote and last but not least the sound quality of the DMP a6 is even better than you would expect it's just so clean dynamic and clear it really is just a treat to listen to listening to male and female vocals like when I listen to Zach Bryan's something in the orange it's just a pure delight there's just such a depth and separation between the music and the vocals it really begs the question of whether or not it's worth spending more money on a higher price streamer ever solos DMP a6 does sound absolutely fantastic. I don't feel like I'll ever have the desire to spend more, but who knows what the future will bring. But what really convinced me of the sound quality is when I put it up against my Anthem AVM90. For those that follow my channel, you know that I believe the AVM90 is the best processor for music. It just has a refined, detailed, and dynamic sound when playing music. It's truly impressive and needs to be heard. It really does push the boundaries of how good a multi-channel processor can be for two-channel music. That being said, I was very curious if the EverSolo streamer would sound better than streaming music through my Anthem AVM90, so I decided to put them head to head. I don't have any tower speakers at the moment, I'm currently building a reference system, so I sold my tower speakers and I'm currently waiting on what I've decided to be my reference speakers, so stay tuned on the channel for what those will be. They should arrive in the first quarter of 2024. I'm currently using several different bookshelf speakers for my home theater, for what I'm calling a Franken bookshelf system. First I connected one of my favorite bookshelf speakers for music, and that's the Paradigm Founder 40B speakers. After which I switched to the JTR 110 HT coaxial bookshelf speakers, because I do find them to to be more precise and neutral. I'm using an XLR switcher to quickly switch between the EverSolo streamer and my AVM90, and I've dropped a link down in the description if you're curious about that switch. I have the EverSolo connected with XLRs to the switch, and then the left and right channels of my AVM90 also connected via XLR to the switch. I then have one set of XLRs going out of the switch to my legacy IV3 amplifier. Essentially, the only difference in the sound being fed to the speakers will be the signal from the EverSolo versus the AVM90, everything else is absolutely equal. Finally, I did level match the EverSolo and AVM90 using pink noise. First, I'm going to let you guys hear some of the sound demos of some songs before I tell you what I heard personally. For all the demos, I was not using any room calibration and the subwoofers were disabled. I only used the JTR 110 HT speakers for the demos that I'm going to play for you guys because I did find them to be more transparent and resolving. But please do keep in mind that these JTR speakers aren't designed for strong bass. So in these demos, the bass might sound a little bit weak but that's because that these speakers truly are designed for home theater and they're designed for a crossover of around 80 or 90 hertz but I did find them to be more transparent and resolving so that's why I decided to use them with this and again I'm not using any subwoofers so there's nothing there to support the base of these speakers and I'll also point out that the demos were the same flak files on title and we're playing at the same bit rate on both units the sources were identical I have to play copyright free music for you guys though uh, these were not the songs that I chose for my listening sessions but hopefully you can still hear some of the differences with this copyright free music. And as with all demos, there is a disclaimer, my room, my recording equipment, and the device that you're listening on, not to mention the fact that YouTube compresses the audio signal, will affect the sound of course, so don't take this as an accurate depiction of what I was hearing in my room. 
With that being said, you should be using a good set of headphones for the demos. The EverSolo demos will be lit with blue and red lighting, and the AVM90 demos will be lit with only red lighting. All right, here we go. I would really like to hear your guys' thoughts, so let me know in the comments below if you were able to hear any differences. What I was hoping you could hear is the differences in clarity and sound separation, which is exactly what I heard when I did the demos and asked my wife to switch between uh, the AVM90 and the Ever Solo using the XLR switcher. So what I did is I would get the same song loaded on the AVM90 and then the Ever Solo and try to get them exactly timed together. Uh, so when she switched it, it would be like there was no time difference between the two songs. When I first did this using the Founder 40B speakers, I was struggling to hear any meaningful differences between the two sources. They sounded essentially identical. There was a few times where I felt the clarity and sound separation was a little better uh, coming out of the Ever Solo, but it was quite difficult to hear. So I decided to switch to the JTR 110 HT speakers that I know are very clean, neutral, and detailed. Uh, they don't have much bass extension and don't go nearly as low as the Founder 40Bs, but if there is a difference in clarity and separation of the signal, I'd have a better chance of hearing that with those speakers. Because the Founder speakers lean on the warm side and tend to smooth music out, uh, they make all music very easy to listen to, but that doesn't help when you're trying to hear differences in the source. So after hooking up the 110 HT speakers, it was easier to hear the clarity and separation differences between the Ever Solo and the AVM90. When I was listening to Zach Bryan's Something in the Orange and having my wife switch back and forth while listening uh, with the JTR speakers, the guitar strums just sounded slightly more clear and separated from the rest of the song over the AVM90. And the clarity was just ever so slightly better. I noticed the same thing when listening to Ghost Riders Stronger. Uh, the music just sounded a little bit more separated on the Ever Solo, just a little bit more clear and clean. With that said, I want to point out that it was wasn't night and day difference. It's something that I had to concentrate on and only something that was clearly noticeable and more revealing on the 110 HD speakers. I do feel like I could hear the differences ever so slightly on the Founder 40B speakers, but it was so slight that I was questioning whether or not I was actually hearing it. But after switching to the 110 HD speakers, it confirmed that I truly was hearing what I was hearing, but differences were not monumental differences. So that brought me to one conclusion. The Ever Solo is the better sounding unit, but it will depend on how resolving and clear the rest of your equipment equipment is, especially your speakers. So in my opinion, if you have speakers that tend to smooth music or have a warmer sound to them, it will be harder to hear the benefits of the Ever Solo streamer. But if you have neutral speakers that are true to source and have a detailed sound, you're going to have an easier time hearing the benefits of the Ever Solo streamer. That being said, you have to remember that I was comparing it to the Anthem AVM90, which performs very well for music. If you have a more budget-friendly AVR or processor, my guess would be that you'll hear a bigger difference between those units and the Ever Solo streamer. I believe that the Ever solo in that case would outperform them to a more noticeable degree when it comes to clarity and sound separation. Whether or not the benefits are worth it is only something that you can answer for yourself as an individual. In my case personally, I do feel like the slight benefits that I'm getting from the Ever Solo is worth it uh, simply because I do reviews and I do a lot of comparisons of equipment. So the more resolving and the more detailed the source, it is going to help me pick out the differences or the benefits of certain speakers or certain amplifiers and that sort of thing. So for me personally, it is worth it, but for you, 
you're going to have to decide that for yourself. But like I just said, if you have a more budget-friendly AVR or processor, I do feel like you stand more to gain with the EverSolo upgrade. I hope that you found this video helpful, and if you did, why not subscribe, tick the bell icon if you do, and please take just one short second to hit that like button. I always do appreciate it. I've dropped links for the EverSolo streamer down in the description below. Please do use my links if you plan on purchasing one of these units. It really does help out the channel, but it doesn't cost you anything extra, so it allows me to keep bringing you content just like this. And just remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.